We now have Zwift on PC, Mac, and our iOS devices. Now closely related to iOS, well, it pretty much is, tvOS. Fourth gen Apple TV is what's required to run Zwift natively on here. The beta has been released to a select few who signed up. I was lucky enough to be part of that. So let's have some hands on with what it's all about. So once installed, Zwift is just another app icon on your Apple TV. Once loaded, it saved my previous data there. There's some diagnostics on this screen as well, so they won't be there in the final. They are there for the beta period. Pairing devices, quite simple. All my Bluetooth devices show up straight away, so I've selected the Neo. My ticker heart rate strap there. Neo is the cadence. Neo as the smart controller. And let's go. Now navigating is an interesting one. That was the first question I had when I found out Zwift was coming to the Apple TV, was navigation via this. This takes a bit of getting used to, but I think they've done a pretty good job. The first build I had was a little clumsy. This is a lot better. So once I'd already logged in, getting up and running after pairing with my devices was less than a minute. And away I go. If you've run Zwift on an iPhone 6, the experience is meant to be almost identical to that. And if you've ridden Zwift before, it looks very, very familiar. As the graphics get a little more complex, with a few trees there on the left and right, the frame rate goes down to around 21, 22. Still very playable. I'm just changing a few screens here, different views. And the familiar sights of Watopia. Frame rate's hovering around 21, 22. Now, I'm not sure how well this will come through on YouTube, but it's just not as smooth as a full gaming rig. So here's what's called the Zwift effect. I was out for an easy ride, but saw the Watopia Wall KOM was just over two minutes there, and I had to give it a crack. So here we are, Buffalo Bike. And with the time estimation there that's popped up on the screen, I could then just manage that gap. So it wasn't an all out effort, I just wanted to collect that jersey if I could at the top. Here I am holding the required wattage. And the experience is exactly the same on any other platform that I've used Swift on. So PC, Mac, on the iPhone, on the iPad, now on the Apple TV, exactly the same. And if you remember my snow video with the Neo and the, uh, the iPad version, I got lost. Again, I was lost in Zwift, effectively. All I was worrying about is chasing that number. So just pegging that number at 155, 154. That should comfortably get me the jersey. A couple of ride-ons coming through. You'll notice some of the scenery is a little bit different. If you've got a really, really keen eye, they've reduced it a little bit. So there's a few less trees, there's a few less details, I guess, in the textures but not really noticeable when you're riding along, going hard. All right, let's get this done, cresting the hill. There was no archway. I think that might've been a tour of California thing that taken the archway, but it's 100 meters to go. Managing the gap. Bit of a last burst there, and no one's up the road to take the KOM jersey in the meantime. There we go, 154.54. So within a few minutes of turning it on, pairing everything, riding up the hill, the Zwift effect kicked in and I forgot about what hardware platform I was on. I was just riding my bike, I was on Zwift. So for consistency across the platforms, it's there, hands down, no question. So let's pull over and have a look at the menus here. Using the little hand controller's navigation. It's quite simple. You can see that the menu selections are just up and down, side to side and it's quite obvious where the mouse cursor actually is with the orange highlights there. Menus you have to dive into, you can see you actually have to click them once and then dive into the menus, but so for the wheels here, for effectively you've got to click that, then you can scroll down. I believe there's a whale here in the background. 
Yeah, there is. So excuse the whale sounds in the background there, that's from the game, but we put the disc on the bike. So back rolling again. Let's have a look at the disc on the bike by changing the view. Beautiful. Not a bad rig. And even underwater there with the whale in the background, we're averaging 23, 24 frames a second. Very playable. So somebody has asked here, am I going up the mountain today? I uh, tried to use voice dictate. And it came out okay. Again, scrolling around with the hand con cursor. And that comes out okay. Using the companion app on my iPhone is much better than using this little tool and the voice dictate, but it's an option. Selecting your route is quite easy as well, either using the companion app or the little remote to click once and just move which direction you want to steer. And once we're done with the ride, back to the main menu, end ride, we have the newly added summary screen there of our ride, who we rode with. Oh, flip back, there we go. So there's the effort at the start there up the Watopia wall and the rest was just riding along. Down to OK. So you can name your ride whatever you like. A little bit clumsy moving around with the mouse pad there though, I'd much rather a keyboard or to do it via the companion app. But we hit save, you can see it's saving up to the cloud. And we're done. One thing with both iOS and tvOS apps is they don't actually quit, they just take you back to the start of the menu. So here's me double clicking, trying to figure out how to get that and then just do the swipe away to close and we're done. So following that ride, I did some side-by-side -side comparisons. I loaded Zwift up on the Alienware Alpha version one that I have here. I used the Apple TV to go into view mode natively on the other screen here. So here's some side-by-side -side footage of me riding with the same view. So on the left, Apple TV. On the right, the Windows 10 Alienware Alpha. So it's pretty obvious, the Windows machine, the Alienware Alpha has a lot more graphical processing power than the Apple TV. The one part to focus on here, I guess, is the smoothness of the road flying past. On the Alienware, it's really smooth. It has a bit of motion blur to it. On the Apple TV, it's kind of chunky. You're looking at about twice the frame rate on the Alienware Alpha there. The last side-by-side -side that I'll show you here is just the speed of the banner that flies through there on the right of the rider. So same rider, same view. It's just a little bit smoother there on the right than it is the left. Not by much, and if you're not a gamer or you haven't experienced nice, silky, smooth Zwift, the tvOS version, so for the Apple TV, is perfectly fine. So there we have it, Zwift Beta running on the Apple TV. Not a bad solution, definitely a good budget solution if you want an all-in-one system and don't want the overhead of running Windows machines with all their updates required. Um, would I be running it for a permanent solution? I'll be sticking to my Alienware Alphas for now. They run buttery smooth and they've got a little bit of life left in them yet. But for a compact, low maintenance solution for Zwift just to get it up and running and provide resistance and that uh, immersive experience and group rides and bunch rides and races and you name it, not a bad solution. The public release won't be too far away so if you have an Apple TV Gen 4 or are looking at buying one, Jump on board and uh, let us know how you go. Thanks for watching.